Right, in this video, we're going to talk about linear circuit elements. We've discussed some of these circuit elements already, and one of them is the voltage source, one of them is the current source, and another is a resistor. So these are all examples of linear circuit elements. For example, let me label this VDC, let me label this I, DC, and let's label this R. What does it mean for a circuit element to be linear or nonlinear? Well, linearity is a very important property both in circuits and in mathematics. And one way we can think about linearity would be to make a plot of the current versus voltage characteristics of a circuit element and then see how it looks. So, for example, if I plot V versus I for the DC voltage source, then I'm just going to get a straight line. Let's make the same plot for the current source, plot I versus V for the current source, then whenever the I is at the special value, I get a straight line. So it doesn't matter what the voltage is, I'm always going to get the same current out of a current source. With a resistor, we might remember Ohm's law, V equals IR, which means that if I plot V versus I for a resistor, I'm just going to get a straight line where the slope of that line then depends on the resistor. So if I use a very large resistance, then the slope will be large. If I use a very small resistance, then the slope would be down here. All three of these are examples of linear circuit elements. Now let's talk about how a circuit behaves or how a linear circuit behaves. I'm going to start by drawing an example of a very simple linear circuit. And let's look at the IV characteristics of this circuit. So now we have, instead of just one linear circuit element, we have two. So if I plot V versus I of both circuit elements, I can see where the two intersect and that will give me the operating point. So the voltage source operates at a constant DC voltage, no matter what the current is. This is a very important property of an ideal voltage source. And this is why I've drawn the voltage source here with a circle around it, rather than using the symbol for a battery, right? Because a battery is a non-ideal circuit element. Now a resistor has a slope where the voltage depends on the current in a linear way. But this particular resistor only has one voltage, the VDC across it. It doesn't have any voltage. These are hypothetical voltages and hypothetical currents that we might get if a different source had been applied to the resistor instead of this one. The source and the resistor intersect at the operating point, and in this case it's the case because I can use Ohm's law on the circuit and it's clear that VDC is IR where this is the current going through the resistor. Let's now talk about another experiment. The black box experiment can tell us a circuit is linear or not. Imagine we have a circuit and we don't know anything about the circuit but we hide it inside of a black box. One way to test whether the circuit is a linear circuit or a nonlinear circuit would be to attach a resistor to it that's variable and start measuring the current and voltage that come out of the black box as I change the resistance. Now I'm assuming that the black box has some power source on its own because if we don't have a power source then it's just going to give us zero volts and zero amperes no matter what I do to the variable resistor. I wouldn't be able to extract any information from the black box. So if our black box has a power source inside of it, then this method will work. And if it doesn't, then it won't. All right, now what's going to happen as I change the resistor? So what I'm going to do is as I change the variable resistor, I'm going to measure the current and I'm going to measure the voltage as well. Or I could just measure the voltage and then to get the current, I could divide it by the variable resistance because V equals IR according to Ohm's law. And then I'm going to make a plot of V versus I. And if I get a line when I do this experiment, then I have a linear circuit inside the black box. And linear circuits are really important and I'll show you in a moment why linear circuits are important. But for now, let's just consider what would happen if my black box contained an ideal voltage source. When I have the variable resistor set at infinity, then I would measure the voltage source as I start to decrease the resistor, but if I don't know that in advance, then I would be able to infer it from the plot. So if I start to change resistance, you see each one of these represents a different resistor because the slope is changing in the V over I plot. Then if I connect all the dots, I'll end up with a straight line. Because this line is flat, I can say, ah, what's inside my black box is a DC voltage source. What if I had inside my black box uh, a solar cell? 
And it's kind of funny because I'm talking about putting a solar cell in a, in a black box, but what I really mean is that we'll, we'll have to have it open to the sun. <laughs> so it's only black on the sides. All right, what would I get from the solar cell if I did this experiment? Well, with a large resistor, again, we'll measure some voltage, like in this case, it, it, an open circuit voltage. And then as I start to use different resistors, I will notice that the curve starts to bend down. And if then I connect all of these points, I will end up with an IV curve that is not a straight line. And then I would conclude, oh, whatever I have in this box, it's not a linear circuit element. And that's true. A solar cell is not a linear circuit element. What if I have a network of resistors, for example, because it's an ideal voltage source, the resistor that I have drawn, drawn right next to it here, it doesn't matter what the resistor is, right? Because the voltage is still going to be the same. If I set this source here equal to VDC, and then I make the plot, I can think about what voltage I will get when the variable resistor is set to very large. When it's very large, and I think about the equivalent circuit, I would have something like this. So I have my VDC. The first resistor doesn't mean anything because it doesn't affect the voltage that's applied across the next resistors. I have a 10 ohm resistor and then I have a 10 ohm resistor here and then I don't have any current flowing out the rest of the circuit out of the black box. The DC voltage here will divide evenly across the 10 ohm resistors and I will end up with 5 volts across here. So I could start off by making this 5 volts on the plot. And let's think about the situation when I bring my variable resistor all the way to zero, what's going to happen? As I bring it down to zero, I end up shorting it out. So the voltage I measured would be zero. So I'm going to be somewhere down in this line right here. And how much current am I going to measure? Well, the current in this case would be VDC divided by 10, measured in amperes. And between the two, it turns out that it's going to end up being a straight line. This is interesting. Because it's a straight line, it means that I have a linear circuit inside the black box. I'm not going to solve the next problem, but it'll give us something to think about. What if I have inside my black box some network of a huge number of resistors and voltage sources, and they're connected in all kinds of complicated ways. We can assume that all these are set to different values. And I put this inside my black box, and then I do the experiment. Am I going to get a straight line, or will I not get a straight line? And this is very interesting because there's a theorem called Thevenin's theorem that says that if all of your circuit elements are linear circuit elements, then a huge network of linear circuit elements can be represented by just one circuit element of each type. So indeed, because this is a linear circuit element, this is linear, 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 because these are all linear circuit elements, they can all be represented by a line like what I just drew. So if I were to do the experiment with that circuit and I plotted current versus voltage, I would end up with the same kind of line that I got in the last experiment, which means that any large network of voltage sources current sources and resistors can all be represented by something that looks like this. And this is called the Thevenin voltage, and this is called the Thevenin resistance. And anything I put in the black box can be represented by just these two circuit elements. There is an equivalent representation using a current source. In this case, it's called the Norton current source and the Norton resistance. It turns out that the Norton resistance equals the Thevenin resistance. So what I can say is that these are mathematical models of linear circuits. And let me prove to you, just for the time being, that the Thevenin resistance and source will give you this kind of a plot. So to do the experiment, we assume that we hook up a test resistor, a variable test resistor, we'll call it R, to this circuit. We change the resistance and we measure the current and the voltage. So what we need is a plot of V versus I for that resistor. So the voltage we need is here, and then the current we need is this particular current flowing out. When the variable resistor is large, no current flows at all, right? Because if it's in infinite, then current can't get out of the source. So we'll be plotting somewhere up here at some very high voltage, and of course the voltage would just be the Thevenin voltage, because without any current flowing through this resistor, then there's no voltage drop across the resistor either, according to Ohm's law. Now what happens when we short the resistor, when this resistance 
is zero, then the current is VTH over RTH, and the voltage would be zero. We'd end up with a plot down here, VTH over RTH. These would be connected by a straight line, and the slope of this line is just given by the resistance value. What this shows is that this particular representation of this kind of inverted line is exactly the representation of any linear circuit that has a bunch of voltage or current sources and resistors in it. If you enjoyed watching this video, then you might be interested in following our playlist and learning more about the fundamentals of electrical circuits.